My question is to Mr. Lee. Um, Mr. Lee, I really appreciate you making clear how very high income earners do receive the most capital gains. And so they obviously disproportionately benefit from the tax savings of partial tax inclusion. It's a big part of why I've supported this government's change to the capital gains inclusion rate, uh, because it gets us closer to ensuring that the wealthiest in our country pay their fair share so that we can then address uh, the, the uh, crises that communities like mine are facing from the climate crisis to housing. Uh, that said, I did hear questions from moderate income earners in my community this summer. I'd like to share an example with you and get your take on it. Uh, Ken shared with me, he purchased a property decades ago that has grown significantly in value. Uh, he hopes to leave his property to his daughter when he passes, but as a result of the transfer, his daughter would be left with a significant capital gain tax liability without any increased cash flow. And that's of course increased due to this change. Ken shared with me, he's not sure how his family would pay for that without being forced to sell a property that has significant sentimental value to them. So my question to Mr. Lee is, do you feel the government uh, considered this impact on more moderate income earners like Ken and his daughter? And do you recommend any supplemental measures that could avoid unintended impacts of this potential loss of a property that holds, like I said, some significant sentimental value to the family? Yeah, I mean, I think it's first, you know, important to point out that people who are declaring large capital gains are an incredibly privileged position uh, in in our society. Um, I mean, I was just uh, just on the back of the napkin, so to speak, uh, looking at a million dollars in capital gains uh, in 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 Canada uh, under the new rules. Uh, Six hundred and twenty-five thousand of that million would need to be declared for income tax purposes, whereas previously um, 500,000 would have to be declared for income tax purposes. Uh, at the top marginal tax rate, if you look at it 50 percent uh, uh, nationally, federal and provincial uh, income taxes, you know, the difference is $60,000 on a million dollars uh, of, of income. So now maybe if you're talking about a situation where you're getting into millions and millions of dollars and it's all declared uh, in one year, you know, there may be some issues with that. But again, we're talking about uh, how much of a discount we're providing um, compared to the 100% inclusion rate for earning uh, income through wages and salaries. Uh, so I don't know that that's uh, necessarily the, 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 the core thing we need to be thinking about. I'd, I'd be interested in seeing, you know, specific examples of where this happens. There is provisions in the tax code, you know, for uh, like farms and fishing properties. When you transfer them to your child, they can be spread over up to nine years uh, and thereby uh, reducing the likelihood of, of uh, um, amounts and capital gains going above that $250,000 uh, threshold. So, you know, in situations like that, to the extent that we consider them a public policy problem, allowing folks to average out those gains over a number of years is, is generally a, a good way of doing it. 